Can you explain exactly what Tether is okay. for anybody who doesn't know? Give a bit of a background. Yeah. And then we'll talk about it. It's I find it very interesting. Okay, so Tether is what we call a stable coin. A stable coin is a coin in cryptocurrency that is pegged to the value of an asset. Okay, so in most cases, we're talking about pegged to the U.S. dollar or pegged to the euro. Uh, so you have the two main ones are Tether and USDC, which is the Coinbase dollar. Mm -hmm. And then most exchanges will have their own version of one or the other, you know, and, and they can go on different blockchains as well. Like there's a version of Tether on the Ethereum blockchain. There's another one on the Tron blockchain. There's a lot of different blockchains that it goes on to make it where you can trade within that ecosystem. And that, that's a little complicated, but the thing with Tether is, is they were under investigation by the state of New York. Uh, the exchange behind Tether is actually Bitfinex. It's one of the earlier exchanges. There's a lot of conspiracies, you know, kind of surrounding that whole thing. But this is what I'll say. There's been a very popular article that has gone around for a long time about how Tether was actually the whole reason for the last bull runs. And the more that they print of it, they print what's called Tether grants. It gives more liquidity to trading. And there's a big conspiracy about how Tether was causing all the bull runs and all the value. And now the state of New York has came out against mm -hmm. them and did a lawsuit. Well, it was finally, after we were told for years, this was gonna be the end of crypto when, you know, there's always the end of crypto when Tether finally popped. Well, the state of New York was like, okay, you just can't trade Tether here in the state of New York. Uh, Bitfinex can't be here, which they were already removed, uh, and pay an eighteen and a half million dollar fine and everything. Don't fine, you think so. that's a red flag, though? Which that, they, that they paid an eighteen and a half million dollar fine for refusing to get audited. Now, for though, my explanation of this to add on to what you were saying is that there's nothing technically stopping Tether, the company, the, the company behind it, from saying, "Hey, you know what? We're going to print." 10 million extra tether. We're just going to release it out there. Yeah. No one's going to know. And then we could buy Bitcoin with it. Yeah. And we're creating this currency <clears throat> that we can control and create more of and just drive up the cost. Or we could just eventually just run away with, you know, hundreds of millions of dollars. So yeah. their issue was that they've refused an audit to prove that every one U.S. dollar you put in is backed by, uh, by, sorry, for every one tether is backed by one dollar. Right. And so when they started getting investigated, they changed the verbiage on their website to say, well, every every mm -hmm. tether is, is not backed by a dollar, but it's backed by a, a US dollar or its equivalent. Yeah. And then people are like, well, what does that mean? Well, it, it's, it's backed by loans and this and that. But they're refusing a third party audit, a yeah. true third party audit. So to me, it, it seems like a red flag that New York is like, okay, we're not going to be able to prove any of this. You're refusing yeah. this, but we're going to ban you here, fine you $18.5 million, but uh, just stay out of New York. Yeah. Well, the state of New York is a bad barometer for anything. Uh, that, that's what I'll say. Uh, why? Mm. They're, of course, against cryptocurrency. Wall Street is there. That's their big cash cow in New York City. You know, everything that is, you know, traditional finance. It's the traditional finance center of the world. And so because of that, they're going to come out against crypto. They don't want Bitcoin to do well. The traditional legacy system, when Bitcoin does well, you know, they start questioning. You hear Charlie Munger come out like, you know, I'm just going to not, you know, dice words here. Uh, make such an idiotic statement like Bitcoin's going to go to zero or let's short it or whatever. Mm -hmm. Bill Gates was saying it. Bill Gates several years ago said, I would short Bitcoin if I if I could. And then, of course, you know, he came out in an interview two weeks ago and said, well, I wouldn't really think about shorting Bitcoin. Like they know what's coming. This mm -hmm. is the way all these guys made this. All this money was a traditional system. Traditional system is going to die. It's only a matter of time. We've seen it with Wall Street bets. The way it's constructed it's not fair. The whole entire internet is the printing press of our gener of our you know modern civilization. All the information for how these people have been making money with derivatives is out there. It's only a matter of time before that catches up with them, and they all know that and they all see that, right? So New York's a bad barometer is what I'll say. They go after everybody. You can't use so many different exchanges in New York. You can use in other places. However, I don't like Tether. I've never liked Tether. I've, I've always said that the Tether story was way overblown. We call it FUD, you know, fear, uncertainty, mm -hmm. and doubt. Uh, it, it's when you take a story and you just pound it over and over again that gives a narrative that makes people feel a certain way. It's an overblown story, 
But yeah, it's sketch. It, it was always sketch. Do I think the entire bull run was predicated upon them printing tether grants? No, I think them printing tether grants was an indication of, of demand coming in. That's what we saw every single time they would print grants and then the demand would come in. So I think it's just kind of one of those catch-22 things. It's really hard to isolate. And I think that's what say New York found is the whole thing's a big catch-22. Mm. A lot of people behind, uh, you know, behind Tether, uh, behind the Omni blockchain, which it was originally created on, behind Bitfinex, Brock Pierce, you know, some people may know him as a, he actually ran for president recently. He was involved in a lot of it. There's a lot of shell companies, a lot of holding companies, a lot of questions. What some people think is this, they, they think that Tether did have the money at one time, and you know they had, I think it was $700 million basically stolen from them by a company that they said, hey, why don't you in Costa Rica manage all our money? And then they I stole all this. the money. Yeah, yeah. So, so is that what actually happened? Stolen, yeah. Stolen, right. Stole. Money. Yeah, yeah. So, well, it just mate, disappeared. It's all conspiracy. Just disappeared, right. yeah, we don't know. And, and lost. And, and we don't know, but <laughs> yeah, that's sure. why I'm a big proponent of the Coinbase dollar. And, and Something people may not know about cryptocurrency is that, you know, Bitcoin's number one, Ethereum's number two. Right now, as of today, Cardano, Card, uh, the day that's recording, Cardano's number three, Tether is number four. The trading volume on Tether and other stable coins is like 60% of all trading, and yet they only make up less than 5% of all coins. People use, and the reason why people use stable coins is to jump back and forth on trades. If Bitcoin goes up to $60,000, you move it all over to Tether, and then the price drops back down to 40,000, well, hey, you just made an extra half Bitcoin if you buy back in at that point. That's the way trading with stable coins why, works. Why wouldn't you just go to cash? Why couldn't I just sell it, get the cash, buy back in? Well, because you're having to take too many steps. You know, isn't that the same step? Just Bitcoin Cash, Bitcoin instead of Bitcoin, stablecoin, Bitcoin. Uh, it works differently on, on some exchanges, like on Binance.com. Um, uh, you know, don't tell anyone. I still have yeah. a legacy account there, yeah. um, and like you can't do that on other exchanges. On Coinbase, they do have the USDC, and then they do have the cash. But on other exchanges, they don't necessarily have that process. So. You, you could do that, um, but in general, you know, I, I think a lot of fast trading, faster trading, and when you're trying to do a lot of swing trading, especially on smaller time frames, you're just trying to do it faster, like why would you do the extra step? Because um, it's, yeah. it's also a question of getting the cash back into the asset. Yeah. Some places, you know, you have to actually go, you know, th there's gotta be a, a, an in-between step. 